Airbrush seals. Um, been brought up a lot recently, the differences between uh, the seals, uh, these are actually the Teflon ones, okay, which look like plastic, uh, versus the rubber ones in your airbrush. The differences for and against, changing them. A lot of you have asked about how the triple seal works versus the single seal, all these different things. So I thought I would have you, you know, basically watch me go through the, the motions of it. Now, originally, uh, this Evo started off as a standard Evolution airbrush, okay, which was uh, somewhat in the sort of early 2000s. I had this one. Uh, in those days, it came with the, the normal um, barrel cap I put on the, the two prong one, uh, like my other ones here. But the seals all inside were rubber, which was your traditional type of rubber seals, okay, which was fine. But the trouble is, when you had solvents run through them or any type of hot lacquer, things like that, they used to swell up a bit, pinch, and then you would get the common things like your airbrush running on. So, i.e., that bit where you release the airflow and it just continues or then gently goes off and you lose that snappiness. What happens is the rubber seal physically swells up just a little bit, causes pressure, a little bit of friction on the moving parts and then doesn't release things as quick. Uh, technically Harder and Steenbeck obviously listened a lot, all they were had in development, but very quickly they came out with a fix. Okay, and this was to use Teflon seals. Now Teflon seals have a little bit of movement in it, but for all intents and purposes, they're like plastic, okay? Um, they're very, very strong uh, and they're not affected by solvents, i.e. lacquers, you know, any type of hot material going through your, your actual airbrush, okay? So I upgraded mine and away we went, okay? So these two down here, we've got various ones. So we've got our Evolution. These the two standard types. This is the AL. Uh, again, it's all got Teflon seals right the way through it and everything else. Uh, when you get the CR Plus, it's slightly different because it will come completely with Teflon seals. No difference, okay? I've got two here. They look identical, apart from this one actually says on it CR Plus, this one doesn't. This is the original, okay? But it did come with Teflon seals, okay? The changeover point. The CR Plus means it's got a triple uh, system in there. So what I'm going to do is show you how to change them and the differences between the two. So, usual thing when you're taking your airbrush down, whip the back off. Then slip your needle out the back. Okay, I have to remember which order these all are. And then what you're gonna have is this guy here. Now you might need, if I just grab mine, you get your little tools in here and it's quite handy to use it. This one at the back here, this back collar can get very, very tight. Okay, so you've got this little guy and it has a little stick. And what you can do is use it to help undo this back section okay which is your main body part all right that's fine we just put it there the trigger assembly comes out all right and then if you wanted to you could whip the front off as well exposing your nozzle and your needle cap okay so that's your your various tools now this is basically the bit you're going to be going on about now if i can get the bottom air stem off as well which i can't without getting my tools on it hopefully oh there we go so if you wanted to, this is your air stem. It should be this type of thing here where you've actually got a white seal on the end. This is a Teflon seal versus these ones in the pack. You might see one just here. If I put it on the white bit, come on. This little guy here was the old one in there. If you've got a rubber one, just replace it for the Teflon one, okay? You can buy the sets of seals and away you go and it's just in there like that, okay? Um, that is the one that causes your airflow flow problem. The other thing as well, if you have still got it, just relax off the, the actual air stem a bit. Just unscrew it a fraction and you'll notice that will make all the difference. Because what it is, you've got so much pressure going up on that little hole up there that it squeezes and it makes everything just a little bit tight. Now, the business end is down in there, okay? Now you can buy a proper tool for this, but I don't have one of those. So what we actually have is, get in. Okay, I've got a little set here. So I'm gonna use the three millimeter you could use the 3.8 and then down in here what you want to do is just drop it down there and rotate it until you feel there and what it is is a little flat headed screw down in there and you unscrew it all the way back okay and then if you can there it goes and it pops okay so if you look down there you can just see metal okay which is good that's what we want and then in here we actually have a seal there's one let me just grab the other one. Okay, and this, if I can get him out, come on. Ooh. To be honest, as you can see, we've got a little bit of paint all in here. So we can give this a clean up, because you see, you get a large chunk of paint. That is not a seal. But what you should have is another two in here. Now, I don't want to damage mine by getting them out particularly, but there we go, there's two. 
So you've got two seals in there and then it sits in here. Now this is slightly cup shaped and this is what causes your pressure on your needle, okay? So that's literally how it is, all right? So there's not a lot of room going on on these, but these literally just sit in here, but you have one and you have two. Now to get it back in, what I use is one of these with a small one and you put this in here. Now, in reality, you get a tool that's got a little blade on here, so when you turn it, it all goes in together. But if you do this, and then what it is, you can literally seat this up here, you know it's all going to line up. So then you can put it down in there. Then normally you would twist it if you've got the tool, we don't, so we're doing it this way. So then you slide that one out, put this one in, screw it up, okay, not over tight because you don't want to over crank it or anything else like that. Okay, and then literally you just slip this all back together. So the end goes back in. This guy goes on here. Your air stem would go up in here. Okay. And then you've got your nozzle, other seal that goes around the end here, should be fine. But also just keep an eye on this little rubber one around here, this little O-ring that runs around this guy. Because if you've got leaks in any one of those, that's when you get bubbles coming back up in your air cup. Okay, so that screws on the end just like that. Then technically your needle goes back up the end. I'm going to say my needle is absolutely filthy. I'm not going to try and push that through because it's filthy. That's the trouble. Okay, so this guy, okay, is the triple one. So if I take a shortcut here, I'm going to just pull the entire back out in one, which is very naughty. And you can see the cicate of my needle. Horrible. Bad, bad man. Okay, so end comes off and then down in here, we're just going to come back in with this guy again and we're going to unscrew okay and now the difference is let's see the left one back up in here i need to get this guy out as well we've got one seal left in here two actually in here now you might see this guy's got paint on it this is the last color i painted so that shows how the seal's working so you might see we've got another one in here and then one, two. And you can see they've got wet paint on. And what it is, this guy causes a sandwich effect. Okay, and we've got one last seal down in here, which you can see doesn't have any paint on it at all. So there's three of those. And you might notice here, this one is a very different design. Instead of it just being a little dish and it's cupped, this guy is really, really deep, okay? But you can see how it works. It's trapping paint and they squash together. So what you do, you just load them back up carefully. There's one in there. Okay, cleaning the paint off with my fingers, if I'm honest. Okay, and there's two seating down in there. And then we've got the last guy again. Okay, so that's the three in there. And then this is what I do, stick this little guy up the back. That just holds it all in just like that on there. And then what you can do, put this in, slide it all the way down and in. Once that's down and in, come back in with your, nice and tight, end goes in. So a bit of a shortcut doing it this way, but hey ho. Back part all goes in in one, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have to slip the back off. need to retract that needle before we put the nozzle back in. Okay. And then you back in the back, end on. Okay. And you're good to go. What I would recommend is a tiny little drop of super lube, wherever I've done with it. Okay. A little bit of super lube down in those seals. It will just help everything flow better, slide through, and everything else like that. And that's it. It is literally that simple. One last thing as we mention it. Uh, we mentioned this actually on the live show. Sid had the trouble with it, uh, and a couple of you have mentioned it at the same time. Probably should have cleaned my airbrush before because this is the trouble I've got. Okay. Now, uh, we were talking about, actually, that one's probably better because it's got the end off. All right. We were talking 
this is where I have to remember which nozzle goes with the, that one's with that one, this one's with this one, okay? We were talking about um, airflow and obviously directions of airflow where it's slightly flicking off and things like that, or you're getting bubbles back in the color cup, yet everything's absolutely fine. Make sure this little hole on the end here is good. Now, if I just try and move all the cameras in just a little bit and we'll see what we can get. On the end here, you might see there is a little hole, okay? Down on the inside, you might notice there's grooves all the way around, okay? With the hole down there at the bottom. This nozzle fits in there and allows airflow all the way around. There's a gap all the way around here. Also, what's important is the end, okay? So check the end is clear. Sometimes you get a little bit of clear, you know, lacquer, things like that, get stuck on the end or varnish or even paint. Okay, all you do, take your needle, okay, and go in backwards and just give it a push and a little roll round, okay? Or just scrape clean this end because if this has got a tiny block, when this is sitting in here, there's still no gap. You should have, I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick up, there should be a tiny gap still all around here. If there's no gap around here, the air comes in, can't get out the front, so then it goes back up into your color cup because it's the only way it can go, all right? It's literally just a pressure that's there. Or sometimes if you've got it really jammed up, you press it and nothing happens. You get no air, no nothing. This is because this end hole is done. Don't be mistaken to thinking that the air is all coming in through the needle and going out with it. It actually comes around the needle causes a vacuum draws the paint atomize it all in one very clever stuff also make sure you have I don't know if I've got one here um, de de de, uh, just try to maybe this one's got it this one has okay this is where I'm gonna get really really confused now to watch this back but you might notice this guy if I can get the end off get one going around but not coming off if you look at the end between these two hopefully you can see the one on the right is a lot bigger okay and if I drop the nozzles you should see a huge difference in size this is because this is a 0.4 this is because this is a 1.5 to 2, okay? 1.5 and 2 do the same thing, 0.4 and 6 do the same thing. But again, if you look at the top, a little bit dirty, so just give it a rub over, give it a poke with the needle, making sure this one is all nice and clear in here because it's just as important as anything else, okay? So that, as you can see, big old hole in there, and when you compare them down in there, you should be able to really see the difference. Okay, so just make sure you have the right type because these nozzles are different and if you've got the wrong one, then you're going to have a lot of trouble. And to be honest, I use this one for doing all my big jobs now, hence whilst it's got a 0.4 in it instead of a 0.2 as all my other airbrushes do. Okay, but that's it. It's these little tiny things that can drive you mad. Okay, and we all have them and know them. If you have them, give us a shout and I'll try and help you out where I can. But as I said, Changing the seals is a dollar, it's a two minute job. If you can get the correct tool, you can do, you don't need it really, it's a bit of a luxury. You can just, if you wanted to, use something like this and go through it like that. So there we go, seals and uh, fixing air problems with your airbrush.